Todd, he produced a pilot for a TV show recently and he needed me to come up with the intro song for that. Hey everybody, I am your girl Candy, and today I'm about to answer some of the questions that I got from a Q&A about the music industry. So on that note, let me go ahead and tell you what they are. The first question that we received was, why do people not do um, artist development like they did back in the day with the Motown and all that stuff? I actually saw a post earlier where I believe it was Sweetie was talking about how she was in boot camp right now doing some art artist development stuff. I really respect her for that, for wanting to grow and build her, you know, just get better. You know what I mean? Just to be better. You know, it, it takes a lot for a person who's already starting to see some success to, you know, recognize that they can always be better. So much love to her. The thing is, I, I personally feel the whole music industry has changed since back in the day. Back in the day, there would be long periods of time where they would prepare artists before they even allowed them to drop a music or drop a single, drop an album or have any type of release. Whereas now, you know, people release music on their computer as soon as they just drop it out the studio. As soon as they come out the studio with it, before they even get it mixed, they ready to throw it up on Spotify or wherever. You know what I mean? It's not the same. It's very much so a microwave music industry society right now. Everything is quick, fast, no preparation. It's just go. Everybody's on go. And although I respect what is happening right now because it's allowing for people who just have a love of music and a love to just be a part of what's happening with the culture, to just throw stuff out there. I do miss some of the people who put in more preparation. And with that said, the preparation costs more money. It's like you putting more money in ahead of time before you're able to even put something out to you know get your money back. And nowadays people aren't trying to do that. They want to get their money back fast. A lot of times labels only sign artists that already have a buzz. So a lot of those artists have already dropped music on their own. So people have already kind of heard them, know what they're about. So the labels don't even really take time to develop them. They'll just take the song they've already started getting the buzz on and then they'll just put it out again through their label just with more distribution. They don't take the time to really, you know, develop the person's look, develop anything because honestly, we're not requiring that as the people who are buying the music. The talent now, they are their own street team. They are, they're their own creators, you know? They don't have other people creating them anymore. It's like, you just have these people that just be like, okay, hey, hey. Sometimes they'll just pull a beat offline, jump on the beat on, <laughs> on any type of little recording equipment and throw that thing up and they're out of here. Um, it's not really a lot of thought put into it anymore. A matter of fact, sometimes overthinking it is not the way to go anymore. This is just a totally different way of doing music. A matter of fact, people like myself who came up in a different era, I even have to retrain myself on how to think about music. Now I got like tons of songs that Quite frankly, some of them is really dope that I've just let catch dust and get old because I overthink. Well, maybe I shouldn't put it out, or maybe I should do this first, or maybe I should do that first, or maybe I should do blah, 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 blah. But the, if I was thinking like some of the more new, new artists or whatever, I would have been putting stuff out, not even thought about it, It'd just be out there. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing the way things that are done now compared to what has been done before. Here's the other thing. So I personally feel like R&B music isn't really like that fast track music like that no more. You know, when you go to the clubs and stuff like that, they're, they're not really like playing slow R&B records, you know, but it, like a lot of the records that's breaking in the clubs or breaking in the streets, and it, you know, a lot of times they're rap records, they're 
up to full records, they're fast hip hop records. When it comes to real R&B or soul music or whatever, you know, yeah, you get playlistings that happen or whatever, but you know, you have to have somebody to kind of like get you on these playlists. So if you don't really have somebody that's, you know, working your record and trying to get you on these playlists, it's like harder for you. Like right now, because there's no touring, you know, a lot of um, R&B artists, you know, they tour, you know, people find out from them from, you know, when they break their records by doing shows and performances. That ain't been happening lately. So I just feel like it's a little bit tougher for R&B artists, which sucks. <laughs> it super sucks. I'm saying as far as R&B artists that are not on a major label. Because when they're on a major label, the label, you know, has somebody that kind of like works their record for the playlist on Spotify and Apple Music and all these other streaming services, they have somebody to try to get you on those playlists so that you can be heard. You know, if you how many often, I mean, I know I'll be listening to playlists sometimes. I'd be like, oh, who is that? And then you may or may not catch a new artist that you may like. It's not often. A lot of the people who are on the playlist are people who have already been popping for a while. When it comes to R&B artists, if you think about it. The music that I typically create, honestly, the stuff that I be right now, I just write whatever I'm vibing to at the time. It depends on what producer I'm working with, type of tracks that I'm receiving. Sometimes I can create something that sounds super, super pop, or I can sound get something that make something that sounds super, super R&B. Sometimes I can make something that sounds super hood, <laughs> or I can go all the way country. It depends. And you guys don't always hear everything that I'm writing, so it's like hard to describe because you probably can't even imagine the things that I'd be coming up with here in my studio or whatever. But yeah, I could be all over the place, you what know. What type of topics do you like? Oh my gosh, what type of topics do I like? I'm a reflection of whatever is going on in my life at that time. If I'm pissed off, I'm writing a song that's pissed off. If I, you know, if something's happening in the world, I may write a song about what's happening in the world. If I just want to have a, a, a party fun song, I can write a party fun song. Um, Sometimes I write songs specifically to whatever subject matter, like maybe if somebody be like, oh, I need a song for this show idea or this TV show or this, you know, like Todd, he produced a pilot for a TV show recently and he needed me to come up with the intro song for that. So, you know, I came up with a whole theme for the, the show. It completely embodied everything that the show was talking about. You know, my mind is just kind of like concept related. Like I love concepts. So if the concept is relationships, it's like for me, it's like, okay, well, what's the relationship right now? Are we happy? Are we getting into it? Did he cheat? Did he, you know, so I can make the concept relate to whatever that is. And it's, it's gonna be a story, it's gonna be relatable, and it's gonna have a strong ass hook. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> Well, I hope that gave you some insight on, you know, what I think about the music industry. And as I said before, I'm gonna bring more and more of my friends and different people that I know from the business that can give you a little tea and tips on the business, you know, things that you may or may not know. So on that note, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>